So this is the Teller Wildlife Refuge. It is a absolute conservation gem in the middle of a bunch of uh, development in the middle of the Bitterroot Valley, just south of Missoula, about an hour. Uh, we're about uh, five minutes north of Corvallis, the little community of Corvallis. Right now, it's absolutely awesome for ducks because when it gets cold, everyone else freezes up, and so then all the birds, this is the only place they can really go. Otto had this vision to, this is a working kind of farm, um, had this vision to make sure that turn this into wildlife habitat and turn it into wildlife habitat for the community. And so he had some money, but didn't really know um, who to talk to and kind of how to do that whole process of conservation easements. Uh, my father just graduated from law school and uh, conservation easements were just kind of starting to be a new thing. And so he worked with Otto and over, you know, over a decade, they put this thing together. But this place, you know, <laughs> it's been woven throughout my life. And you know, when I first started to come down here is when my dad started helping put this together with Otto. And we used to drive across this creek right here and then go across for the picnics over there. I remember playing uh, wiffle ball baseball out there. Uh, and to be able to sit in that blind that I sat in the blind with my father for the first time. And then have my daughter there with me today, uh, you know, just it gives you a sense of place, but also a sense of purpose as well. <laughs> if you volunteer here, uh, you can get you know a day of hunting, and so there's whitetail hunting opportunities here. There's upland bird hunting, and then there's the waterfowl hunting that we did today. And you know today was awesome. I will tell you, it is better than this, which is crazy. Um, but you know for a while there, that first hour, man, it was like every couple minutes there was a flight of five or a flight of six or two or one. So one of the great things uh, about living in America is we're different than the rest of the world. And it's where the wildlife belong to the people and where we have public lands. In fact, we have 640 million acres. So all of us live like kings. Like we live like kings today. And I live like kings every time I'm out on public land and it doesn't cost me a dime. You know, we all pay as taxpayers, I think it's like $2, you know, per person in the United States to own 640 million acres. So that's here in Montana where we have you know, 35% of the state is public lands. Or if that was, you know, in Wisconsin where I just was, or Nebraska, or Oklahoma, like, our kingdom is all over the place. And, you know, it doesn't matter who your parents are, it doesn't matter how much money you made last year, it doesn't matter what political party you belong to, they're open to everybody. And to me, you know, not only is that unique in America, but I think that's unique in the world. And, you know, it's up to us, none of that happened by accident, and it's up to us to carry that forward. And I think that, you know, that's what our job is right now is to do our part to make sure that we carry on this legacy. And so, you know, again, like you could be, you know, a New York City like financial kind of guru or you could be a school teacher here in Corvallis and you're on the same playing field when you're on public lands. That land does not care. All that land cares is if you have two feet, then get out there and experience it. seven or eight years old and we came out here and went in the blind that we hunted today and I remember hundreds and hundreds of ducks taken off and like like the sound of that like the thunderous eruption like I it's something I'll never forget and I think it's something um, you know that I hope that that Sydney and Colin get to experience um, but I think like when I think about my dad, I think that's one, you know, I think about fishing on the Big Hole River. I think about hunting elk down in the Cinnabar Basin. And I think about hunting ducks right here. And I think all of those experiences not only turn me on to conservation and you know, maybe want to get a wildlife biology degree in college, but also set me on the path of conservation that I am now. You know, I'm 
very lucky to be working and living in the place that I grew up and, uh, and really building you know, the next generation of conservation leaders. Father here, he didn't wear a beard a lot. I see him at the uh, OTO Ranch down outside of Yellowstone. It's another Elk Foundation project. Here's another awesome photo of him and the Bob Marshall. This is uh, thoroughbred mule Bob, his pride and joy. And Bob Marshall, but you can see the scapegoat, scapegoat mountain here in the back. That's probably over Lodge Bowl, maybe? I don't know. Men's Journal article, um, I changed my name just for conservation. Kidding, like I've had my name my entire life, but this land is your land is a little weird. Um, over here, so this is when my father passed away, and uh, Senator Baucus wrote this uh, from, or he gave this speech from the floor on the Senate floor, and then sent copies of the congressional record to myself uh, and my two sisters, um, and there it talks about us kids, and um, pretty special to me. Um, 1935, 1934, 35 is when the duck stamp was first penned, and so this is just a magazine from back then. I love thinking about that time and the, you know, the dirty 30s that was kind of going on, the lids coming off the prairie here in this country, and it was sportsmen and women that stepped up and really said, we want to make sure we put that lid back on the prairie. So it just reminds me of, you know, in tough times, good things can come out of that. You know, I think it's these places that um, that inspire me. You know, my father has been gone for 23 years. We're at a spot where his uh, rock is, um, where his ashes are. Um, a couple days ago, we put one of my dog's ashes into this creek here, and he joined uh, one of my other labs as well. And so there's three ashes here in my will. I'll come here eventually. You know, it'll be somebody in my family that's uh, reconnecting me with my father, but uh, I couldn't think of any other place I'd want to be. You know, it's my place to come back and say hi to him. We got to bloody the rock today, which is a tradition I started after he passed away. And, you know, I was 20 years old when he passed away and pretty formidable part of my life that he disappeared from. And I was in a pretty rough spot. And I think that the ability to come out here and remember him uh, and kind of say hi to him, like I, that, that meant the world to me and I think it helped me get through those times. And so now when I'm doing that and I'm sharing that with my kids, you know, it's a ritual now, but it's a way to say hi, you know, every single time. Um, you know, for me, again, it's, uh, it reminds me kind of what conservation is, you know, this place, you know, there was fences all over the place. It was in disrepair. The habitat wasn't as great as it could be. And through, you know, tons of volunteer work, tons of, of professional work that's done by the staff, able to bring this place back to where it's a world-class place. And that's really what our role is as hunters, I think as conservationists in general, is to make this world a better place than we left it. And I think the Teller Wildlife Refuge in particular exemplifies what that, that really is. And really, you know, it hasn't been that long. I grew up five, six, seven years old here, and now this place is just a world-class gem, and that didn't take that long. You know, it's about everything, you know, like Aldo Leopold talked about, like it's about all parts, and this place really embodies that, and you know, I think what a special place for the community, what a special place for my family, and what a special place for future generations. But it's about that next generation. And if, you know, for all this stuff that came before me and what I'm doing now, if we're not passing it on to the next generation for them to help pass that on, then what are we really doing? And you know, I think this place uh, lives and breathes that.
So there's a Steinbeck quote, and I'm not, uh, I'm gonna get it wrong. It's a book, he called, a book that he wrote called uh, Travels with Charlie, and it said, uh, for some other states I have admiration. I think there's like another part of that, like I even like them a lot or something like that. With Montana, it's love, and it's hard to describe love when you're in it, but you know it. And that's the way Montana is for me. You know, I'm a fifth generation Montanan, and uh, I've got the opportunity to travel all over this country. And again, it is very special, very different, very diverse. But Montana is my home. And, uh, you know, I'm not going to say I'll never live anywhere else, but this is where I'll die.